it's another episode of Tournament in a Tea Break. I'm Ros Satter. And George Belshaw. And we've just come to the end of day one of the NITO, apparently, uh, ATP World Tour Finals, where uh, Roger Federer pretty much schooled Jack Sock and uh, Alexander Zverev came through a pretty tough battle, actually, to uh, book a place in, well, not book, book a place, but to certainly get his first win on his debut. Uh, let's start with Federer. And what did we think of um, his form? What did we think of how he's looking? Yeah, it was a pretty slow start from him, I thought, in terms of performance. But he never looked like he was going to lose that match. I don't think he played particularly well. And I don't think Sock was bad either. I thought Sock actually played quite well for him. But I thought Federer played quite badly for him. But Federer was still very, very comfortable. It never felt to me like the American was going to win this match. No. I mean, I, I mean, you know, Federer got the, the best start, jumped out to a straight break lead, um, and it just seemed to me like um, Sock was... Um, it took him a while to find his range, I think. Um, maybe maybe the court's a little bit more lively when it's got a load of full bodies in, and for Roger Federer, of course, it was always going to be absolutely packed to the rafters. Um, it's interesting that Federer himself um, has kind of admitted in press that it, it, there's, a, there's a lot of area for improvement. Um, he, he pointed himself as saying, full steam ahead, he's going to be going um, for it. I mean, I don't see him dropping any sets, certainly in the, in the rest of round robin now, I think, now that he's got those nerves um, you know, because it seemed that he was nervous. There was like almost anxiety in some of his shots when he had a bit of a wobble. Yeah, well, he, he put out some, made some really interesting comments about how he'd barely played since Barcelona. He'd really, really done nothing during that Paris Masters week, and then obviously he's had that one match with Andy, and then he's just brought his intensity up from yeah. Thursday to Saturday. And I thought that showed today. I really thought he missed a lot of chances in big moments in the match at times. But in the relatively big moments, because of course he never. Uh, 11, 20, 11, 20, I'll repeat that. In, in relatively big moments, of course, because he never faced a break point. But there were a lot of times where he was uh, trying to get a break on sock and just missed a comfortable yeah. shot. He missed that really obvious one where <laughs> sock stuck his bottom uh, in his face. But. <laughs> <laughs> which you know was entertaining but I thought Federer was fairly sloppy by his own standards yeah. and at the end he was like right okay I've not played much it's really important for me to get through these kind of first round matches even here where it's a round robin you know it's important just to get through that and yeah. he will improve um, Zverev up next for him that will be probably as good a match as we'll see in the round robin stage I thought Zverev was a little bit Erratic? Yes, I mean, he made a 41 and four yeah. errors, I think. In the yeah, end. that's pretty impressive. I mean, it, it, again, it's, it was an impressive show by him on his debut because we've seen in the past that when people come here, you know, they're, they're almost overwhelmed by the, by the whole thing. You're in the top eight for the year. Um, you know, and even the round robin can sometimes um, send people into a bit of a tailspin. Um, I mean, I thought he started really well. You know, it's not that Chilich was playing badly by any standards, but I think he just got that fortunate break and, and held on to that advantage. And then in the second set, he just sort of fell away. And we, we spoke about this the other day. When he when he when he does fall away, he does it with in, with spades. So I, you know. It, it must be a frustrating one for Chilich to have lost because he, I really thought he had that in the bag. Yeah, it felt as if Chilich was the more experienced player, as he obviously is, and it looked like he'd kind of got over a slightly slow start, start to dominate, was being more consistent. Zverev was getting frustrated. There was a moment where he was coming close <laughs> to whacking that racket on the floor, but he just about calmed himself not to. Um, but, you know, Zverev has, you know, boundless talent and he can mm. really really go on and dominate this sport I think he's got the right mentality when things aren't going his way sometimes to really kind of reassert himself and he just looked so fired up to win this match once he got himself back into that third yeah. and it, it, once he'd broken back it never really felt like he was going to lose from that stage and that'll be a big blow for Chelic he's got a bad record here <clears throat> um you know, I think we've, he's lost six of his seven matches. He's never won a first one. He's never been in contention to go no. to the semi-finals by the last match. You know, no. if he loses to Jack Sock on Tuesday, he might as well pack it in here because 
you know, you, <laughs> that might be a bit harsh, but you know, he he needs to win that match, get yeah. the confidence up, and you never know if Federer's beaten Zverev and is already through, foot off the gas, Chilich could sneak it. But. So, so let's turn our uh, gaze to tomorrow. Obviously, we start off with Team Dimitrov. Um, so. Team looked tired. We, we talked about this yesterday. He looked a little bit weary. Um, do we think that Dimitrov's got a chance to level things up in their head-to-head? Yeah, probably fancy Dimitrov in that group to come out with Nadal. To be honest, I think um, I think Dimitrov's had a really good year. Well, I've got him. Um, mm-hmm. He obviously had a really good run in Australia, and he was really unlucky not to reach the final there. It was a really great battle with Nadal. Um, I think his, le- his level's generally been a lot more consistent. And on this surface, I do fancy him to be able to hit through yeah. the team a bit more. And as we said, I think team looks a little bit slower at the moment, just through fatigue. Yeah. You know, his ridiculous schedule, which we don't need to go over again. We all know how ridiculous it is. We'll um, be here forever if we actually make it. <laughs> we actually, yeah, um, all 40 weeks, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, Dimitrov started really well. Um, you know, won Brisbane, looked really good. He was really impressive in Cincinnati. So that's why I was so disappointed with US. his uh, with his US Open. But, you know, he, he seems to have sort of um, collected his thoughts. But, of course, the big question is the big N. Yeah, I mean, I went to watch Nadal practice today and I was not particularly impressed. I didn't watch the entire hour and a half, but I was there for a good 25, 30 minutes and I've never seen that man hit so many errors in my life off basic shots. It was going long, it was going high, it was going into the net. He was screaming in Spanish. Karina Buster's like, what the hell, this is normally me making the mistakes (laughs) rather than you, Rafa. What what is going on? it was really, really strange, and yes, he was moving okay, but what I found really striking about it is that normally when you see Rafa practice, it's really intense, he looks really yeah. focused, and it's everything, like, it's, it's magic. It wasn't that. It was, okay, I'm moving okay, but I'm making a big point to show I'm moving okay, and just striking, and he just his, his timing just seemed a bit off. It looked like he'd not played much. He'd spoken about playing one or two hours per day yeah, for the last four right. days. And, and that showed he didn't look like a guy who it's his job to hit six hours a day. You yeah. know, the, the spirit wasn't there. So whether he's shaking those cobwebs off today, I'm not sure. But there are concerns well, I mean, for tomorrow. Well, there, sure. I mean, there's an argument that says that if you're going to you know, screw up with bells on, practice is probably the best time to do it. I bet you now, more than ever, he's really happy that none of the practice courts are available to the public. Because if I was a member of the public and a rapper fan, I'd probably be pretty suicidal by now. Yeah. It, you would not have enjoyed that as a Rafa fan today, I don't mm-hmm. think. Um, but yeah, you're right. It, you know, that, that is the only good thing you can take from that practice today. You know, he's fit enough to get through it and be, you know, it can't get much worse than that tomorrow. No, <laughs> it really I mean, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, Goffin always strikes me as a kind of player that sometimes becomes overawed with who he's playing. Um, I mean, we've certainly seen him a bit like that when he's played Federer. That you know, the, the enormity of who he's playing seems to him. But I just got the feeling in his press conference that he was up for this. You know, he's like, you know, to play him not on clay, I'm going to make him run. I, I'm going to be really honest right now and say, before this year, I, I didn't think that much of Goffin. I thought he was a, a hard worker, but I thought he was never going to go much beyond the top ten. This year, I think his attitude's really changed. He had a big win over Djokovic. He pushed Nadal really hard in, I think it was Madrid, where they had that really close first set where he lost the tie break. And I, I, I started to genuinely think, right, this guy's in really good form, and there's a genuine belief mm. coming to him now that he thinks he can do it at this level. And then he trips over at Roland Garros, and but, all of a sudden he's I gone. I know, but look, look at his comeback, though. I mean, you know, anybody else would have pretty much just been happy to get through the end of the season I mean to again to listen to him in press where he's saying you know once it became a bit of a reality that he could do it he really went for it I I you know I think I probably um, picked uh, Nadal in three but now I'm actually beginning to wonder especially after you came back from that practice um, but we shall see yeah um, he, he's, you're right with Goffin he's made a great surge to get here again there were talks of him being tired 
but yeah, he's, he's definitely got a chance. I'm still sticking with Rafa because I'm <laughs> always uh, too much of a scaredy cat to actually go against these big guys on these matches. But Goffin can spring an upset. It'll be interesting. It certainly will. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to George and Roz uh, on wrapping up our day one of the NITO ATP World Tour Finals. Join us again tomorrow. Thanks for listening.